title, The Haunting of Willowbrook Manor. The storm raged outside, the wind howling like a chorus of tormented souls. Inside Willowbrook Manor, the old mansion atop the hill, the atmosphere was equally unsettling. Shadows danced on the walls as the flickering candlelight struggled against the darkness. Emma, a young woman hired to catalog the estate's vast library, shivered as she worked. She couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Willowbrook Manor had a history stained with tragedy. Legend had it that the original owner, Lord Nathaniel Willowbrook, had made a pact with dark forces to attain his wealth and power. The price? The souls of all who dwelled within the mansion. Since then, Willowbrook Manor had been abandoned, feared by the locals, who whispered tales of ghostly apparitions and sinister occurrences. Emma tried to dismiss these stories as mere superstition. She was a woman of science, not prone to believing in the supernatural. But as the days passed and strange events unfolded, she found herself questioning her skepticism. One evening, as Emma worked late in the library, she heard footsteps echoing in the hallway outside. She froze, her heart pounding in her chest. She was alone in the mansion, or so she thought. With trembling hands, she reached for the lantern beside her and crept towards the door. The hallway was empty, but the air was thick with a sense of dread. Emma's lantern flickered, casting eerie shadows on the walls. She could swear she heard whispers, faint and indistinct, like voices from beyond the grave. She tried to tell herself it was just her imagination, but deep down, she knew something was terribly wrong. Emma returned to her work, but her nerves were frayed. She couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, of being in the presence of something malevolent. As the night wore on, the storm outside grew fiercer, the wind rattling the windows like the desperate cries of lost souls. Suddenly, Emma heard a sound, a soft, plaintive wail coming from somewhere deep within the mansion. She froze, her blood turning to ice. It sounded like a child crying, but there were no children in Willowbrook Manor. Or were there? Driven by a mixture of fear and curiosity, Emma set out to investigate. She followed the sound through the labyrinthine corridors of the mansion, her lantern casting a feeble light in the darkness. The crying grew louder, more insistent, leading her deeper into the heart of the mansion. Finally, Emma came to a door at the end of a long, dimly lit hallway. The crying seemed to be coming from behind it. With trembling hands, she pushed the door open and stepped inside. The room beyond was small and musty, illuminated only by the dim light of the moon filtering through the curtains. In the corner of the room, huddled on the floor, was a figure, a child, no more than six or seven years old, with long, tangled hair and tear-streaked cheeks. Emma's heart went out to the child. She approached slowly, trying to offer comfort. Hey there she said softly. It's okay. What are you doing here all alone? But as Emma drew closer, she saw that something was terribly wrong. The child's eyes were empty, devoid of life or emotion. And when she spoke, her voice was hollow, like the wind whistling through a tomb. We must leave this place, the child said, her words sending a chill down Emma's spine. Before it's too late, Emma recoiled in horror. She wanted to run, to flee from this haunted place. But something held her, rooted to the spot. The child reached out a hand, her fingers cold as death, and grasped Emma's wrist with surprising strength. You must listen to me, the child said, her voice growing urgent. The darkness that dwells within these walls seeks to consume us all. We must escape while we still can. With a sudden burst of courage, 
Emma wrenched herself free from the child's grasp and stumbled backwards. I don't know who or what you are, she said, her voice trembling, but I won't let you frighten me. I'm leaving this place, and I suggest you do the same. But even as she spoke, Emma knew it was futile. Willowbrook Manor held her in its grip, its dark secrets entwined with her own fate. She could feel the presence of something ancient and malevolent lurking in the shadows, watching, waiting. As Emma turned to flee from the room, she heard a sound, a low, guttural growl that sent a shiver down her spine. She froze, her heart pounding in her chest as the darkness seemed to coalesce before her eyes, taking on a sinister form. Before her stood a creature unlike anything she had ever seen, a twisted, grotesque mockery of humanity, with gnarled limbs and glowing red eyes that burned with unholy fire. It snarled and bared its razor-sharp teeth. Advancing towards her with terrifying speed, Emma screamed and turned to run, but the creature was upon her in an instant, its claws tearing into her flesh. She cried out in agony as pain seared through her body, overwhelming her senses. In her final moments of consciousness, she saw the child standing in the doorway, a look of sorrow etched on her spectral face. And then everything went dark. When Emma awoke, it was to the sound of birdsong and the gentle rustle of leaves in the breeze. She opened her eyes and found herself lying on the cold stone floor of Willowbrook Manor, the memory of her ordeal still fresh in her mind. But as she tried to sit up, she realized something was wrong. Her body felt strange, disconnected, as though she were floating above it, looking down from a great height. And when she looked down at her hands, she saw that they were translucent, ethereal, like wisps of smoke in the morning light. With dawning horror, Emma realized the truth. She was dead, a ghost condemned to wander the halls of Willowbrook Manor for all eternity. And as she drifted through the abandoned corridors, her anguished cries joining the chorus of the damned, she knew that she would never escape the darkness that dwelled within those cursed walls. For Willowbrook Manor was more than just a haunted house. It was a prison, a tomb, a place where the souls of the living and the dead were bound together in an endless cycle of torment. And as the sun set behind the hill, casting long shadows across the overgrown garden, the spirits of Willowbrook Manor stirred once more, their mournful wails echoing through the night, a warning to all who dared to tread where the living should not go.